you look at the industries, automotive, energy, industrial, construction, we're seeing AI move from the back office to the front office now. More customer facing innovation, doing more predictive needs, enhancing safety, uh, you know, creating more smart operations real time. This is really what's coming in now. When adopting new technologies and what are some of the pain points that you have observed across these years along the lines? I think the biggest challenge has always been people. So you get a lot of cultural resistance. And now with AI, one of the biggest fuel to ensure AI works well is data. So another key challenge is really on the fragmented data uh, you know, that we have. And the last one is really the investment required. I mean, no company is going to invest unless you can show them a clear return on investment. So I think, you know, in order to be able to really integrate AI to, to your business, you need to make sure the cultural uh, change management is there. The data is cleansed and, and integrated in a way that AI can make use of it. And also have a return on investment. What is the money we're spending? What's the value we're going to get out of it, right? For me, CIOs don't need to be tech. They need to be business partners. They need to understand the business. They need to see what are the things that are going to allow and enable the business to grow, business to become more competitive, business to become more efficient. So, you know, for me, it's all about starting with a purpose. What's the purpose of doing this? Not what the tech is required, but what is the purpose? So not tech, start with purpose. Align the digital initiatives with the business goals. So what is it that we want to do and why do we want to do it? And if there is a return from it, right? As a leader in this space, you know, uh, for someone who's also been the recipient of IDC, CI 100 honorary, how has your leadership approach changed over the years? Leadership is, in my opinion, you know, you obviously have to be humble, um, and know your limits, you know, a leader doesn't mean you know everything. So you need to have a good talented team around you that you help to develop and grow and ultimately to achieve anything in life, you need that kind of team environment, you know, and, and delivering things as well as one. So I think uh, for me, the biggest lesson is not just understanding tech, but also having the soft skills to develop and grow teams and getting them to deliver the value for the business. You're watching The Mainstream. I am Simran Shivalkar, your host for today. And we are back with a brand new episode from our exclusive series, Voice of CIO. Today, we are joined by Mr. Shimon Zaman. Mr. Zaman, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Simran, for the kind invite. It's a pleasure to be here. Same here. And with that being said, let me quickly take this opportunity to share a few things about you and introduce you as well. Mr. Zaman is a Group Chief Information and Chief Digital Officer at Ali and Sons Group with over 20 years of experience in driving digital transformation, AI innovation and business growth across industries like automotive, oil and gas, retail and construction. He has led groundbreaking initiatives that have earned him recognition as an IDC CIO 100 honorary. From pioneering AI solutions to optimizing global operations, he is passionate about aligning technology with business goals to create real measurable value. Today, I am more than thrilled to know more about his journey and hear out some incredible insights from the industry. So without any further ado, let's begin. Mr. Zaman, with an extensive experience in AI and also digital transformation. Can you share a bit about your journey and how do you see the current digital landscape evolving? If you could throw some light on that. Sure, thank you for that great introduction. Uh, very humble to be here. I think if we're looking at um, the digital landscape evolving in the industries that I've worked in, I think uh, the way I see it is the, the landscape is uh, shifting from a siloed uh, automation to more intelligent connected ecosystems now, right? If you look at the industries, automotive, energy, industrial, construction, we're seeing AI move from the back office to the front office now more customer facing innovation, doing 
more predictive needs, enhancing safety, uh, you know, creating more smart operations real time. This is really what's coming in now. Right. But again, as someone who has always been at the forefront of integrating AI to streamline processes, from your point of view, what do you think are the biggest challenges today that companies face when adopting new technologies? And what are some of the pain points that you have observed across these years along the lines? I think the biggest challenge has always been people. So you get a lot of cultural resistance. And now with AI, one of the biggest fuel to ensure AI works well is data. So another key challenge is really on the fragmented data uh, you know, that we have. And the last one is really the investment required. I mean, no company is going to invest unless you can show them a clear return on investment. So I think, you know, in order to be able to really integrate AI to, to your business, you need to make sure the cultural uh, change management is there. The data is cleansed and, and integrated in a way that AI can make use of it. And also have a return on investment. What is the money we're spending? What's the value we're going to get out of it, right? And have, you know, really strong executive sponsorship to make sure that the use cases are backed by the top and to deliver value. Fantastic. And along these lines, I understand, Mr. Zaman, that you've also led some amazing initiatives when it comes to AI-driven strategies to ERP implementations as well. Now, if you could tell us, you know, a bit about how this entire journey has been and if you could also share some of those use cases from your recent projects. Yeah, so Alien Sons, we've just completed a project called Quantum. And what that is, is really building the foundations for AI to now start taking, you know, a front seat. Right. Um, We've transformed the entire organization to Oracle Fusion Cloud. 95% uh, of everything we have is on cloud today. Uh, and what that does is allows us to now have the agility to grow fast, you know, and at scale. We've also embedded, you know, great in technology, so, so, you know, small things like face IDs across our organization, helping us to become much more efficient and effective in the way we and the manner we uh, run our operations. We've recently, today actually, we've just launched our new employee digital platform, which has embedded um, custom GPT in it. So asking questions to custom GPT about processes, policies, it's a really easy thing to do. We've also built in agentic AI into those kind of things. So, you know, getting processes like applying for leave, I can actually ask custom GP to do it for me. I don't have to go into this ERP to do it. Right. Uh, and the whole purpose of all this is to make sure that, you know, we can make our business much more efficient and be streamlined and be much more competitive using AI. Wonderfully said so. I mean, the recent example of, you know, industries having a great shift uh, after the AI boom. Along these lines, if considering your experience in global transformation, how do you think digital innovation will change supply chains and even operations for that matter, especially with all the unpredictability in the world today? I mean, we have AI coming in, we have quantum computing, a lot of emerging technologies taking the center stage. So how do you see this as an opportunity? I think, look, digital innovation is bringing resilience and agility. You know, when you have AI, artificial intelligence, IoT, Internet of Things are enabling real-time visibility. Uh, they're allowing us to predict the future and allow us to be more proactive in decision-making, right? right? So despite the global shocks of things going up and down, now with smart connectivity, supply chains, you know, you can anticipate the changes in the supply chains, right, and adapt faster than before because you have real-time information, you're predicting stuff way before they're happening, you know, so you're reducing risk. Uh, this is a, a main thing that's coming in now. Now, moving ahead, I also want to understand from you, for someone who has spent almost more than a decade in this space, uh, how do you think the role of a CIO has evolved throughout these years, you know, whether in terms of just viewing or working throughout the IT landscape to actually overseeing a lot of other things parallelly. How do you think this role has changed or there's a shift in the CIO spectrum? For me, CIOs don't need to be tech. They need to be business partners. They need to understand the business. They need to see what are the things that are going to allow and enable the business to grow, business to become more competitive, business to become more efficient. So, you know, for me, it's all about starting with a purpose. 
what's the purpose of doing this? Not what the tech is required, but what is the purpose? So not tech, start with purpose. Align the digital initiatives with the business goals. So what is it that we want to do and why do we want to do it? And if there is a return from it, right? Right. Um, so these are the key business alignments that you need before you can venture into tech. You know, you need to understand the problem that you're trying to solve first before you run into the solutions. And I think traditionally tech, CIOs have always run to the solution before they understood the problem, right? And the value that it's going to create. Also, you need a culture of experimentation in both data and, you know, and people. You need to get the right people. Top talent is key to success. Um, that's an obvious one. But also today, if we're really going to utilize AI, you need data. Lots of it, clean data is required. That's the fuel for AI. So making sure that, you know, those things are there. And, you know, I think the best CIOs, in my opinion, are the ones who can translate tech into value. Okay, what is the reason why I'm doing this? What's the return that we're going to get from this? And then delivering that return clearly, consistently, and, you know, being able to communicate that to all, you know, parts of the business from, you know, the board to top management uh, and to the general public in terms of the employee population because these things need an entire organization to transform and you need everyone on board everyone facing the right direction everyone uh, going in the same journey uh, to be successful Completely said so and for you as a leader in this space you know uh, for someone who's also been the recipient of idc ci 100 honorary how has your leadership approach changed over the years how do you think uh, you're being able to work across cross-functional teams efficiently how do you think your leadership has changed for you i think you know leadership is in my opinion you know you obviously have to be humble um and know your limits you know, a leader doesn't mean you know everything. So you need to have a good, talented team around you that you help to develop and grow. And ultimately, to achieve anything in life, you need that kind of team environment, you know, and, and delivering things as, well, as one. So I think uh, for me, the biggest lesson is not just understanding tech, but also having the soft skills to develop and grow teams and getting them to deliver the value for the business. It's one thing having a vision of, I want to achieve something but it's another thing delivering it and i think delivery comes with greater collaboration you need to be able to collaborate across all different sectors of the business and have a very close alignment to the board and the senior executives but also you need to be able to solve problems efficiently fairly in a robust manner and have a team that's fully motivated and willing to jump uh, hoops for you right and all this takes time effort and you make lots of mistakes throughout the journey but ultimately you learn from those kind of things and you know for me it's never about failing it's about trying giving everything you've got and when you do fail you get up you learn from it and you move on i think these are the things that i would you know give anyone you know recommendations to look at fantastic and uh, lastly mr zaman what are some of the key things or you know anything that you wish you had known earlier right when you were starting out in your career and today when you look back any piece of advice or key recommendations best practices perhaps that you would like to give out especially for cios or leaders who are just starting out their journey i think look I, i'm very fortunate to be in the position i am i've had very good leaders that i've learned a lot from not just leaders you know everyone i've worked with i've taken something from i've learned something you know the junior the middle management, senior board members, you learn from people, you know, how to do things good and how to not to do things, right? So learning is a very important part of development. Um, I think, you know, what would have really helped me if I had a coach, someone that I could aspire to become, someone that could guide me. And I think for the youngsters today, they need those kind of, you know, people that have that kind of experience to coach them, to guide them. I think this is what will really add value. I wish I had that when I was growing, growing up and throughout my career. Um, so uh, one piece of advice, you know, if you want to have a career as a CIO, go and make, connect with more CIOs and learn from them of, of their journey and how they got there and what are the things they could, you know, help you and guide you on. Because it's sometimes you'd be able to go through a journey faster if you know how to do it, right? And someone that's done it 10 times 
will give you hacks or how to do and how to avoid things and how, you know how to get things done better and, and more quickly absolutely i think uh, that's a really wonderful piece of advice that you have shared with us mr zaman and while we conclude the session i'm sure our audience has a lot to take away so thank you once again for being a part of the series and while we conclude i certainly look forward to connecting back with you again thank you so much imran pleasure thank, thank you. you so much